Good morning, friends. I just want to take a minute and share a thought with you. Uh, our president has been in office less than a week. Today is the 24th of January of the year 2017. And, you know, things are looking very hopeful. And that's a great thing. But you know as well as I that the Bible plainly says that there's a day coming when they will begin to say peace and safety. Now, friend, they've been saying that since 1991. They have been trying to reach peace and safety with the Oslo Accords. And now we have a president that is going to do everything in his power to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. On top of that, his son-in-law, from what I understand, is a Jew, a uh, Jewish descendant. Uh, our president has said that if anybody can make peace and come to peace and orchestrate some type of peace, it's going to be his son-in-law. Well, friend, let me say this. Um, you've got, on top of that, you've got the Jewish rabbis asking Donald Trump and Putin to build their temple. And friend, let, what I'm most concerned about is that now that we have a president that is pro-Israel, pro-Christian, and is doing things to make the world a better place, it seems, that we now grow lax and think that we're out of danger. We're not, friend. What we are, we have a president that is going totally against the New World Order which is only going to make them uh, fight back even harder. So I just hope that many of us do not fall asleep thinking that we're no longer in the end times just because things are beginning to look up. It's not that, friend. This is our opportunity in these final moments to get out and share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ without worrying about being arrested and thrown in jail or prison or whatever for hate crimes. Because, see, when you say that Jesus is the only way, that's called hate speech to some people. But now we have a president and vice president, which is pro-Christian. And, friend, this is our... This is our brief window to get out and share the gospel. And friend, we got to take it to the streets. We have got to take the power of the Holy Spirit to the streets. Friend, if thousands of people can march like what we see people marching, I won't even name the names of the groups, but you know what I'm talking about. If they can get out and protest and carry signs and, and do these crazy demonstrations, friend, you and I have the gospel. We have God Almighty living inside of us. We have the truth. We have the love, the hope, and the peace that these people really need. And friend, we need to get out in the streets and not protest but we need to get out in the streets and present the love of Christ. I would simply say we just need to ask people, is there something heaven can do for you today? Because everybody has a need. Even those who are marching, they have a need. Maybe they have a loved one who's sick. Maybe they need a job. Maybe... They're worried about things. You know, maybe they're having 
chest pains or back aches or headaches or migraines. Friend, when you give the love of Jesus Christ, unbiased love to these people, and you show them love. See, the people that Jesus healed, they weren't the religious people. Jesus said, I didn't come to save the righteous. I come to save the lost. You know, he was put down because he ate with the sinners and the tax collectors. I mean, friends, we have the gospel of Jesus Christ living in us. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. It's time we introduce the people on the streets to the love and the care of Jesus Christ the same way he presented the love and the care of the Heavenly Father to the people in his day. And that's how we're going to make a difference, friends, when we get out with Jesus Christ walking in the will of the Father. Well, friend, be encouraged today. And let's not take our eyes off the fact that we are living in the last days. And this is our chance to get out and share the gospel like never before. You have a blessed day, my friend.